Okay, welcome back. In this video, we will continue our video series on medical terminology. In this video, we'll discuss chapter number 14, uh, the special senses of sight and hearing. Uh, learning objectives for this chapter, define and spell the word parts used uh, to create terms for the special senses of sight and hearing, identify the major structures of sight and hearing, break down and define common medical terms used for symptoms, diseases, disorders, procedures, treatments, and devices associated with uh, the special senses of sight and hearing. Build medical terms from the word parts associated with the special senses of sight and hearing. And lastly, pronounce and spell common medical terms associated with uh, sight and hearing. Uh, first, we'll start off with uh, some anatomy physiology uh, and some word parts. We'll start with some uh, combining forms. Uh, the first one, blepharo, is a reference to the eyelid. Conjunctivo is a reference to the uh, conjunctiva, which is a membrane that lines the eyelids. Uh, the cryo is a reference to tears. Iro is a reference to the iris, which is the colored part of the eye. And oculo is a reference to the eye. Uh, the next two, ophthalmo and opto, both are a reference to the eye. Uh, odo is a reference to the ear. Retino is a reference to the retina. Rhino is a reference to the nose. And sclero is a reference to the sclera, which is the white part of the eyeball. All right, now we'll go over some basic anatomy. Uh, the special senses are a part of the nervous system. And of the five senses that we have, four of them are considered to be special senses. Those would be uh, sense of smell or olfaction, uh, taste or gustation, sight or vision, and hearing or audition. Now these four are considered to be special senses because all of their receptors are centralized in one body part. So all four of these receptors are focused just within the head. The other sense that we have, the sense of touch, has receptors all over the body. So that is a general sense. But these four listed here are special. Now this chapter will cover uh, two of the more important senses. Uh, the sense of sight and the sense of hearing. Alright, in this image we have an illustration of a lateral view of an eye. It will cover some of the uh, major structures here. These would be the eyelids. And the eyelid is closed. And these would be hair and the eyelashes. The light would come in here through the pupil then hit the lens and be focused on the back of the retina. Then whenever you're looking at that vision is converted into an electrical impulse to be sent to the brain via this st structure here, the optic nerve. All right, this image, we have a illustration of a lateral view of the ear and the various parts. The outer ear, the part that we see, auditory canal, uh, eardrum, uh, the three smallest bones in the body, the ossicles, and then the cochlea, the actual organ of hearing, uh, and the semicircular canals here, which help you keep your, your balance and your equilibrium. All right, now I'll talk about some uh, pathophysiology with these two senses. First one, sight. Diseases can be either inherited or a result of an injury or from an infection or just due to aging. Now, diseases of the nervous system can also affect your sense of sight. For hearing, diseases can affect either hearing or your equilibrium or both. Diseases can include developmental defects, damage from an infection or inflammation or from injuries. Now, brain diseases and brain tumors can also affect hearing and your equilibrium. All right, now we'll talk about some uh, word parts for signs and symptoms. And we'll first focus on uh, the eyes and sight. Uh, some common combining forms you'll see. Let's see, astheno is a reference to a, a lack of strength. Uh, blepharo is a reference to the eyelid. Coro is a reference to the pupil. Leuco is a reference to white. And ophthalmo is a reference to the eye. Uh, some common suffixes you'll see. Algia is a reference to pain. Ia is a condition. Itis is the inflammation of. Opia is a vision condition. Uh, ptosis is a drooping or a sagging. And erasia is a bursting forth of blood. All right, now we'll talk about some particular signs and symptoms of the eyes and of sight. Uh, first one, asthenopia is another term for uh, eye fatigue or eye strain. There's a lack of strength within the eyes. Your next term, blepharoptosis. This is an abnormal sagging or drooping of an eyelid. Blepharitis is an inflammation of the eyelid. 
and if this is uh, a chronic condition that may need you may need to surgically repair the eyelid which would be our last term here uh, blepharoplasty the surgical reconstruction of an eyelid uh, leukocoria this is having an abnormal white reflection within the retina of the eye ophthalmalgia this is a reference to having uh, pain within the eyeball next term here ophthalmorrhagia if we're to break down this term ophthalmo is a reference to the eye and rhagia is a abnormal discharge so this term is usually used as a reference to uh, bleeding from the eye. All right, now we'll talk about some uh, diseases and disorders of the eyes. And uh, the word parts, we'll start with the prefixes. A means lacking or without. Dipple is a reference to double. Hyper means above or in excess of. Some common combining forms. Uh, blepharo is a reference to the eyelid. Conjunctivo is a reference to the conjunctiva. Cysto is a reference to a, a cyst, a water-filled sac. And, uh, the cryo is a reference to tears. The iro is a reference to the iris. Uh, Kerato is a reference to the cornea. Uh, litho is a reference to a stone. And ophthalmo is a reference to the eye. Presbyo is a reference to old age. Retino is a reference to the retina. Uh, sinuso is a reference to a, a sinus. And stigmato is a reference to a point or a mark. Uh, some common suffixes you'll see. Uh, Iasis is an abnormal condition. Ism is a process or a condition. Itis is the inflammation of. Malacia is the softening of. Opia is a vision condition. Pathy is a reference to disease. Plegia is a reference to uh, paralysis. All right, now we'll talk about some particular diseases and disorders of the eyes and of sight. Your first term, amblyopia. This is another term for lazy eye, where there is a impaired vision without the without an obvious defect or a change in the eye and it's uh, somewhat related to our next term uh, strabismus which is another term for being cross-eyed this is the inability of the eye to become aligned properly because there's an imbalance of the muscles of the eyeball uh, cataract this is a medical condition where the lens of the eye is becoming more and more opaque more and more clouded over so this will lead to blurred vision and eventually a complete blindness Conjunctivitis, also known as pink eye, is a infection of the conjunctiva, which lines the inside of the eyelid. And it's very obvious when someone has this condition because their eyes have a very reddish or pinkish look to them, so it's why it's called pink eye. Is there our next term? The cryolithiasis. This is a condition where you have uh, stones that are found within the tear ducts. And they can lead to our next term, uh, the cryocystitis, which is an infection of a lacrimal sac. So the sacs where tears are actually produced they become infected and that infection spreads from just the tear ducts onto a sinus within the skull that will give you our last term here uh, the cryosinusitis an infection of the lacrimal sac plus the sinus all right this image we have a person with with cataracts the white opaque clouding over of both eyes and if these are not treated then they will block more and more of this person's vision leaving them uh, completely blind all right, this image, we have an example of conjunctivitis, or pink eye. So this is how it should normally look, where the, the eyeball itself is white. The sclera should be a white color. But when the conjunctiva, that membrane, gets infected, it becomes very reddish in color, very pink in color. See our next term, detached retina. This is where the retina actually becomes, where it becomes detached from the choroid or the, the tissue lining of the eye itself. Now this is a, a very serious and an, an emergency situation. Diplopia is another term for having double vision. Uh, glaucoma this is a condition where there is a buildup of pressure within the eye and that buildup of pressure will impact vision and if not treated over time can lead to blindness. Here's how that would look. The eyeball is really two chambers filled with fluid. We have a chamber up here and a chamber back here. So as pressure in this posterior chamber builds, the fluid has to go somewhere. So as that pressure builds, it's going to push on the back part here where it meets the optic nerve. Well, if this gets too much pressure, it's gonna impact how well you're able to see. So this will lead to a gradual loss of vision and eventually blindness. And this is what someone with glaucoma would see. Someone with glaucoma loses their peripheral vision, their vision to the side of their head. So it looks like they are looking down a, a tunnel or a a plastic tube so this person would not be able to see what's on this side of the tree or this side of this person they're looking down this cylinder shaped tube of vision 
and as the pressure builds and builds and builds, this circle will get smaller and smaller and smaller. So our next term, uh, hordeolum. Uh, this is another word for a sty, which is a, a localized infection uh, of an eyelid, usually involving an eyelash. It can also be called our next term, calasian. They both are a reference to a sty. Here's an illustration of how that would look. Basically an infected eyelash, iritis. This would be an inflammation of the iris, the colored part of the eye. A keratitis, this would be inflammation of the cornea, the outermost uh, bulging part of the eye. See our next term, macular degeneration. Sometimes this is referenced as the AMD, age-related macular degeneration. This is the leading cause of severe vision loss in people who are 60 years old and older. And the macula is the, the center part of the retina. So as we age, that will start to break down and deteriorate. So as this happens, when the person is looking forward, they see a blind spot in their middle of their field of vision. And as the macula gets worse and worse, the circle will grow. And if not treated, can lead to blindness. So our next term, ophthalmomalacia, is the softening of the eyeball itself. So our next term, ophthalmoplasia, is a uh, paralysis of the muscles surrounding the eye. And uh, retinopathy this is a general term that refers to any disease that affects the retina. So going back to the uh, sample image we had before, if someone were to have a macular degeneration, this is what they would see. The center of their field of vision, because the macula is breaking down, is becoming deteriorated. So as the condition gets worse, this blind spot will get larger and larger and larger. And eventually it will fill up this whole field of vision and the person will be completely blind. All right, next we'll talk about uh, some refractive errors when it comes to uh, vision. And a refractive error is a imperfection of the eye that prevents it from uh, focusing light correctly. Uh, the first one, uh, myopia, is another term for being uh, nearsighted. The person is able to see things up close, clearly, but they can't see things far away. So they can sight things near to them. That's why it's called nearsightedness. See, the opposite of that would be hyperopia, which is being farsighted. So the person is able to see things far away, fine, but things that are up close are blurry. So they're able to sight things far. That's why it's farsightedness. Uh, presbyopia. This is farsightedness, but caused by the loss of elasticity within the lens of the eyes. Very common a condition as people get older. Emetropia. This is the condition of having normal vision. You're not nearsighted. You're not farsighted. You are seeing like you are supposed to be seeing. And last term here, astigmatism, or AST, is a defect in the eye where the lens is not able to focus the image you're looking at correctly. And it could be due to a problem with the cornea, it could be due to the lens, it could be due to the, the curvature of the eyeball itself. Right, here are some examples of those refractive errors. The image up top is what you want to have, emetropia. So in this example, the person is looking at this tree, which is a distant target. So what you want to happen is light to be directed in, through the pupil, through the lens, and right on to the retina, on the macula of the retina. Someone who is nearsighted, or has myopia, the image is focused ahead of the retina. So that's why they see things up close fine, but things that are further away become blurry. Someone who is uh, farsighted or who has hyperopia, the image is focused behind the retina. So they're able to see things far away clearly, but things up close are blurry. And for astigmatism, the cornea has an irregular curvature, so the light isn't directed the right way, so that will lead to blurred vision. So you usually have the image you're looking at be focused on several points, not just one point. All right, now we'll talk about some eye treatments, uh, procedures, and the devices. And the word parts, the prefix intra means within. Uh, some common combining forms you'll see. Uh, cysto is a reference to a water-filled sac or a cyst. Uh, the cryo is a reference to a tear. Uh, Kerato is a reference to the cornea. Oculo is a reference to the eye. Opto is a reference to the eye or to vision. Radio is a reference to x-rays. Uh, rhino is a reference to the nose. Some common suffixes you'll see. AR means pertaining to. The suffix logist is a specialist. Uh, the suffix uh, metrist is someone who measures. Stomy is the creation of a new opening. And tomy is the process of cutting. All right, our next term, uh, cataract extraction. As the lens becomes more and more clouded over, more and more opaque, one of the ways to correct this condition is to take out or extract the cataract and extract the lens. But when you do that, you need to replace it with something. It leads us to our next term, IOL intraocular lens. This is implanting of an artificial lens within the eyeball. And one of the methods that is used to remove a cataract is the next term, 
referred to as FACO, but the full term is uh, FACO emulsification. This is a more modern technique to remove a cataract. And this works by using high frequency uh, ultrasound vibrations, basically to break up the cataract, and then that those fragments are uh, extracted out. Uh, corneal grafting, also known as a corneal transplant. This is taking the, the cornea of a healthy eye, usually from someone who has died, and transplanting it into someone who has a diseased cornea. Cryopexy. This is a procedure that's used to reattach a retina or to prevent the retina from uh, becoming detached. You use very intense cold to help fix tears within the retina. And it's somewhat related to the next term here, uh, scleral buckling. This is another procedure that's used to reattach a retina. The way this works is a either a, a type of sponge or a piece of hard plastic is placed outside the eye. And by putting in a, a foreign object, pressure within the sclera will be used to help uh, repair any kind of damage to the retina. And this buildup of pressure is actually relieving the, the pull on the retina to become more detached. So the retina is able to go back into its normal position. See our next term? Uh, the cryocystorenostomy. This is the uh, creation of a new opening within the, within the lacrimal sac and the nasal cavity. Usually because there is a blockage somewhere within the lacrimal sac. In right, this image, we have an example of uh, cataract extraction and then the implanting of the IOL. So you have the lens here, it's, which is covered with a cataract, is taken out, and then the, the artificial lens, the intraocular lens, is put in its place. So our next procedure, LASIK. LASIK is actually an acronym. L-A-S-I-K stands for Laser Assisted In Situ Keratomalusis. Now this procedure uses a laser to correct any number of different, any type of uh, eye issues, uh, farsightedness, nearsightedness, astigmatism. So a, a laser is used to cut through the cornea, and the whole point of this procedure is to uh, reshape the cornea. The optometrist. This is a person that specializes in the field of optometry. And this is different from an ophthalmologist who studies in the field of ophthalmology. And even though they're both medical professionals that deal with eye care, they differ in how much training that they receive. An ophthalmologist is a medical doctor who specializes in eye care and vision care. An optometrist deals with vision disorders and is able to prescribe glasses or corrective surgery. So optometrists are not medical doctors. They are doctors of optometry. So ophthalmologists go to medical school, optometrists do not. Next from here, RK, uh, radial keratotomy. This is a surgical procedure that will help to help to correct myopia. And this involves cutting of the cornea. And it's called radial keratotomy because you have radial incisions made into the cornea. Starting in, in the middle of the cornea, they're going out to the border. All right, now we'll talk about some signs and symptoms of, of the ears and the sense of hearing. Some word parts, uh, prefixes, an means lacking or without, hyper means above, para means alongside or nearby, a common a combining form you'll see, odo is a reference to the ear, some common suffixes, acousis is a reference to hearing, algia is a reference to pain, aragia means a, a bursting forth of blood, and urea is a discharge or a flow. All right, some signs and symptoms of the ears and acousis. This is a complete deafness. The complete lack of hearing. Hyperacusis is having an increased sensitivity to sound. Uh, Paracusis, this is impaired hearing or, or deafness. Otolasia is another term for an earache in general. Otorasia, this is uh, bleeding from the ear. Otorrhea is where you have drainage from the ear. Uh, tinnitus, this is having a, a buzzing sound or a ringing sound in the ears. And vertigo, this is a sensation of whirling or spinning or a loss of balance. All right, now we'll talk about some diseases and disorders when it comes to the ear and hearing. Some of the word parts, uh, some common combining forms that you'll see. Externo is a reference to outside or being external. Mastoido is a reference to the mastoid, which is a process found just behind the ear, a feature of, of the skull. Medo is a reference to uh, median or the middle. Odo is a reference to ear. Presbio is a reference to old age. Sclero is a reference to the sclera, which is the white part of the eye, or a material that's very hard and very rough. Some common suffixes. Acusis means hearing. Itis means the inflammation of. Osis means an abnormal condition. Pathy means a disease. Or some uh, conditions when it comes to the ear and hearing. See, our first term, cholesteatoma. This is an abnormal, uh, non-cancerous uh, skin growth that's found in the middle, 
in the middle section of the ear, right behind the eardrum. Mastoiditis is the inflammation of the mastoid process, which is found just behind the ear. See our next term here, Meniere's disease. This is a disorder of the inner ear that will give a person the feeling of very severe dizziness, severe vertigo, and also uh, tinnitus, and then some hearing loss, and also a feeling of general fullness in the ear. And it usually only impacts one ear. See, otitis is an inflammation of the ear, and depending on what part of the ear is inflamed, we have more specific names. Otitis externa, this will be inflammation of the external ear, so the outer ear and the ear canal. Otitis media, or OM, will be the middle ear, so inflammation of the middle ear. And that's how that would look. An example of uh, OM, we're zooming in on this area here, the eardrum. So this tympanic cavity can be filled with fluid, which will cause a pressure on the eardrum. It's a very common sight to be uh, infected. Autopathy, this is a general term that refers to a disease of the ear. Autosclerosis, this is a reference to a hereditary condition where there's a an overgrowth of bone within the inner ear, with the ossicles of the inner ear, and that will lead to a progressive deafness because those ossicles are interfering with the transmission of sound. Presbyacusis, this is a loss of hearing that is natural as we get older. So this is age-related hearing loss. So if we break down that term, presbyo, references old age, and acusis, hearing condition, the loss of, of hearing due to aging. Now we'll talk about some ear treatments and procedures and devices and the word parts. We'll start with some combining forms. Audio is a reference to hearing. Labyrintho is a reference to the uh, the chambers of the middle and inner ears, the labyrinths. Mastoido is a reference to the mastoid process. Maringo is a reference to the eardrum or the tympanic membrane. Odo is a reference to the ear. Tympano is a reference to the tympanic membrane or the eardrum. Uh, some common suffixes you'll see. Ectomy, the surgical removal of. A logist, a specialist. Logi, the study of. Metry, the process of measuring. And plasty is the surgical repair of. Scope is an instrument used for viewing. Scopy is a process of viewing. And tomy is the process of cutting. Right now, I'll talk about more particular or more specific treatments, procedures, and devices. Audiology is a field of science that deals with the, the study of hearing. And someone who focuses in this field would be an audiologist. And some common tests that an audiologist would use would be audiometry, which is measuring uh, the range and the sensitivity of a person's sense of hearing. A cochlear implant. This is the uh, implanting of, a, of an artificial device that takes the place of a person's natural uh, cochlea. The cochlea is the organ of hearing. So when that gets damaged, the person has an impaired hearing or may be completely deaf. So by implanting a cochlea, an artificial cochlea, they're now able to hear. Labyrinthectomy, the surgical removal of a labyrinth within the ear. Mastoidectomy, this is the surgical removal of diseased cells from the mastoid. And to do so, you need to cut into the, the mastoid. That process would be a mastotomy. Maringoplasty, the surgical repair of a perforated eardrum. In order to you know, surgically repair the eardrum, you need to be able to cut into that. So that'd be a maringotomy, cutting into the eardrum itself. And the last term here, otology. The study of the anatomy and diseases of the ear. Otoscope is a tool that's used to visualize the inside of the ear, and the overall process of viewing inside the ear would be otoscopy. So our next term, tympanometry, this is a test that measures the uh, the function of the middle ear, and also the the mobility of the eardrum. And the tympanoplasty would be the surgical repair of an eardrum. This is a little bit different from uh, maringoplasty. With maringoplasty, you're only dealing with the eardrum itself. You're not moving it out of place. But with tympanoplasty, you are lifting it out of position to repair it. So there's a slight difference there. All right, this image we have someone using an otoscope to examine this person's ear. This whole thing will be the otoscope. All right, now we'll go over some common abbreviations in reference to the eyes and the ears. All right, the first one, AD, this is an acronym for a Latin term, which means the right ear. AMD, age-related macular degeneration. AS, is a Latin abbreviation for the left ear. Uh, AU is a reference for both ears. AST, astigmatism. Uh, EM, ametropia. EENT stands for ear, eyes, nose, and throat. ENT, ear, nose, and throat. HEENT would be head, ears, eyes, nose, and throat. IOL, intraocular lens. LASIK, laser assisted in situ keratomalusis. The OD, the Latin. Acronym stands for 
Oculus Dexter, which means the right eye. OM, Otitis Media. OS is the Latin abbreviation Oculus Sinister, or the left eye. Odo is short for the ear. OU means both eyes. Uh, FACO is short for FACO emulsification. TM, tympanic membrane, or the eardrum. We'll end our chapter with our combining form quiz. Uh, terms on the left, rhino, meadow, oculo, odo, or blefaro. They'll match up with either ear, eye, nose, eyelid, or middle. Rhino goes to nose. Meadow goes to middle. Oculo goes to eye. Odo goes to ear. And blefaro, eyelid. And here are all five terms that uh, correctly match to their definition. And that brings us to the end of chapter number 14 on the special senses of hearing and vision. We will conclude our video series on medical terminology with our next video on chapter number 15.